Hi, welcome to Talk Back Live, a show that gets you involved in live conversation and sports with Brian Camp on Sports Update, bringing you the latest developments in today's world of sports. And now here's your host, Frank Allen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and a pleasant night to each and every one of you, wherever you are in your different time zones around the world. Once again, we're here at another Thursday. It's 8 p.m. on the East Coast, 5 p.m. on the West Coast. It's Friday morning in London at 1 a.m., and it's 9 a.m. in Tokyo, Japan. Still Friday over there as well, and they're getting ready to set the start their day. Hi, everybody. My name is Frank Allen, and welcome to another edition of Talk Back Live. This is a show where we get together each Thursday and invite everyone around the world to join us. And if you're brand new, we especially want to hear from you because uh, we're all around the world and you are different time zones around the world. And the purpose of the show is to get everyone involved. Now, let me explain for the new people who are coming in. Now, you guys, you already know the guys that's been around for a while. You already know the protocol. But for the new people, who are joining us for the very first time. We get together each week at this time and we wanna involve you in conversation. How do we do that? Well, you have a keyboard at your computer or you have a keyboard on your telephone or your, 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 your pad, your iPad or whatever it is that you use. Uh, they call it tablets now, right? Well, use that keyboard because while you're talking to me, you can uh, type in whatever you want to say because I start the conversation as the host of the show, get things going. And in between all of that, you can type in whatever you want to say. I'll see you right there on the big screen and I will entertain all of your thoughts and ideas. And if you have a topic that you particularly want to talk about, feel free to... Uh, Escalate that, and we will uh, do our very best to indulge you. We want you to know that we're coming from three different places all around the world because we're global. We're on Facebook Live, we're on YouTube, and we're also on Instagram. We're here live. And uh, of course, as I said, we're going to be here for a full hour. Now, those of you who are watching us on Facebook, take the time right now, being that the show is still young and we just got started. So, this is a good time, as any time, to get set and tag this show to your friends. Now, I know you have a lot of friends on your Facebook account. Maybe too many to handle. Maybe you don't want to tag them all. Just a few, right? Get a few of them in there. Tag them. Let them know that we're here. They'll see that information, and they'll know it's from you. And what they'll do is they'll click on to that, um, that notification. And guess what? It brings them directly to us. And they'll see you, they'll see me and everyone else that's involved here. And you can talk to each other at the same time. If you're watching us on YouTube, as usual, I'd like to encourage you to get on our uh, uh, you, uh, YouTube channel and subscribe to us. You can do that. There's a little button right there. All you have to do is take your mouse, click onto it where it says subscribe, and that's all you have to do. Now, don't forget, there's no money involved, no nothing. It's free. All you have to do is just click it one time and you're in. Now, when you click it and you mix and it brings you us, brings you to us, you're a full-fledged member because it'll give you opportunity to know when we come on the air live. You'll see the notification when it pops up, just in case you forget about the show, it's on the air. Mm -hmm. Even if we so much as, you know, post another video or so, that information will pop right up. And when you click on to that uh that notification, it brings you right to the website. So um, that's all you have to do. And for the rest of you guys who are joining us, and you guys who are joining us on Instagram, we want to say hi to you. All you have to do is to continue to follow us and tell your friends about it. You know, keep the, per the word percolating so everyone knows that we're on the air live each week at this time. We've got so many things to talk about in conjunction with the show uh, later on, not too far away in the program. We're going to link up with Brian Camp. Brian Camp brings us sports each week, he brings us the latest developments in today's world of sports on Sports Update. We link up with him. You'll see him personally. You'll get a chance to meet him. He'll be on the air live and you'll see him. And uh, if you have any questions about sports while he's on the air, he will certainly be able to answer those questions for you. And um, so there you go. We have all of that. And later on in the program, also, we have what we call this thing called um, This Day in History. And we have uh, a lot of 
that today. So uh, we're going to be relaying all of that. Anything that happened on this day in history, we're going to backtrack and go back and read it and uh, see what happened on this day in history. And of course, before the show is over, we're going to do the other regular feature that we do is bring you those old movies that you love so much. It's called From Turner Classic Movies. I have a pick of the week for your weekend, just in case, in conjunction with whatever you do on the weekends, you may want to catch up on some movies. I want to help you out with that because I have a few movies that I think you'll be interested in. And it's all coming up this weekend. And of course, we'll have all of that coming up later on in the program. And that's it. And that's how we do it. So we're so glad to have you along with us. And remember that everything that we talk about, all the views and the opinions expressed on this show, Talk Back Live, does not necessarily reflect the view or the opinion of the people of Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Zoom, or any other media outlet, or any other uh, uh, media outlet, or, or social media outlet, or broadcast facility, all of that. So we separate ourselves from all of that. We don't want to give anybody a problem, because whatever we say or do here, we take full control of it. And of course, we take full responsibility, but they don't have to worry about us doing anything really bad, but that's just a, a disclaimer because we do everything clean here. So I wanna thank you guys for being along with us and um, stay with us. There are a lot of things to talk about. Yes, here we are, we're still in the spring season. And before you know it, it's gonna be summer. The weather here in New York, uh, it's kind of like, I guess it's seasonal at this particular point. We've been in the 60s, so that's not bad. Uh, but I understand as I looked ahead on the Weather Bureau, I understand like, Sometimes I think it's next week or so. If it's not next week, the week after, we're going to boost up to the 70s. So as the time goes further, the weather gets warmer, and there's so many things to look forward to. You have uh, outdoor activities that you want to indulge in. Of course, you know, outdoor barbecues, which is, by the way, down Brian's uh, alley, because, uh, you know, every summer he keeps the, as he calls, a smoker going. And so uh, we're going to ask him about that and see what he has going. Maybe he has something going this weekend. We're going to find out about what his weather forecast is, too. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's warmer than what we have here in New York. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for being along right now. It's uh, seven minutes past the hour. And again, the name of the show is called Talk Back Live. And here we are all together in one big room and enjoying everything. Uh, we got some in the entertainment news. We got some uh, sad news to to report to you. Um, so many things are happening. Just so many things. Uh, when I when, as soon as I walk in the door, my producer said to me, "You've got a jam packed show tonight, so get ready for it." So we're gonna whatever's jam packed, whatever they think that we can't get out of the way, we're gonna go. We're gonna model through it. We're gonna get as much material in as possible. Plus, again. If you want to indulge in the show too, all you have to do is just uh, type it in and we'll see right up there on the big screen. You know, Len Goodman, he was a former dancer of Dancing with the Stars, not a former dancer, but a, a former judge of Dancing with the Stars. He died this week uh, peacefully at the age of 78 years old. Um, and Dancing with the Stars, it's been on the air for a long time. It was one of the popular shows of people um, who enjoy uh so-called celebrities when they get on the air and they get a part, then they start dancing and things like that. Well-known people, I'll put it that way. Well-known people have been on that show, Dancing with the Stars. Anyway, uh, Len Goodman, he was the former judge, one of the former judge, Dancing with the Stars, died at the age of 78. You know that judge, Alton Maddox, remember him? Do you remember Alton Maddox? He was the uh, headline uh, grabbing civil rights uh, lawyer who represented people like uh, Tawana Brawley. Remember that, that case back then, Tawana Brawley, right here in the United States, and some of the most high profile victims in uh, racially charged attacks in New York City during the 1980s. He passed away as well. As a matter of fact, he passed away this past Sunday in a nursing home. I was unaware that he was in a nursing home. I didn't know that, but he wound up in a nursing home. He passed away. Uh, it was in the Bronx right here in New York City, where we are right now. And he was 77 years old. So our thoughts and our prayers go out to his family. He was quite an attorney though. He was quite an attorney. 
uh, but I had no idea that he was in a, in a uh, nursing home. You got the news today, Jerry Springer, the former Cincinnati mayor and longtime TV host, uh, whose tabloid talk show was known for outrageous arguments, throwing chairs and physical contacts between sparring couples and home wreckers. Well, he's passed away as well. He passed away uh, peacefully at his home in Chicago on uh, today, he, early today, on a Thursday. If you're into Friday, if you're Friday, then to you it was yesterday, but Thursday, uh, Springer had been uh, diagnosed with pancreatic, pancreatic cancer and uh, a few months ago took a turn for the worse. Uh, this week. And Jerry Springer, um, he was uh, 79 years old. It's big news. It's, it was all around the news. So it happened today. And I remember uh, that talk show that he had. Uh, when he had that talk show, a lot of you remember the talk show of all the brawls and all the fighting. People look forward to seeing that. I even got caught up in the fever with that. People look forward to seeing that. But believe it or not, before he went to take that route, he was a political talk show host. It was more of a political show than it was when he left off with it. But he ran that show for 27 years, 27 years on the air with that show. And then later on, as you know, he became Judge Jerry. He had a show called Judge Jerry. That didn't last too long, uh, obviously. Uh, but uh, he had a big round. But again, he was, again, mayor of Cincinnati, so he's made the rounds in his life. But um, I had a chance to meet him once. A very nice man. Very nice man. Uh, so our prayers go out to his family, Jerry Springer. And, um, of course, um, we're going to miss him. We're going to miss him and all the antics. But I'm pretty sure uh, somewhere in the world, somewhere, if they're not doing it in New York, I'm pretty sure somewhere in the world they'll do some reruns of the Jerry Springer show. And I'm pretty sure if you don't get enough of Jerry Springer, if you can't find him in your area, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of episodes on YouTube. YouTube, you can only find but everything, everything on YouTube. So I'm pretty sure you can find some uh, Jerry Springer um, uh, programs, right? And last but not least, well, this is the big news. This is the real big news. Harry Belafonte, a beloved Hollywood star, icon, singer, and uh, prominent civil rights activist, well, he died of congested heart failure. And he died on Tuesday at his home where we are here in New York, in Manhattan, upper Manhattan, right here in New York City. He was a, he was a, 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 a avid New York citizen uh, and he was born here. Uh, he was born in Harlem Hospital. I believe it was Harlem Hospital. If it wasn't Harlem Hospital, it be, I know he was born in Harlem. I don't know if it was actually Harlem Hospital. I would just guess and say he did, as did Sammy Davis Jr. And he was 96 years old. And uh, he was a singer and an actor. He, I mean, he did it all. I mean, he act in his early years, in the 1950s, he was doing a lot of acting here. One of my favorite, one of my favorite um, uh, movies that he did um, was Carmen Jones back in 1954. He did that with Dorothy Dandridge. It was a wonderful movie. Uh, every once in a while, they'll show it on Turner Classic Movies, but uh, that, that was one of the best movies uh, that I've seen him do with Dorothy Dandridge. Also, he did a, a, a movie called Ireland in the Sun in 1957 with James Mason, Joan Fontaine, and also, again, Dorothy Dandridge. That was back in 1957. Now, that movie, Ireland, Island in the Sun, was kind of a controversial movie, you know, because back in those days, you know, uh, interracial marriage was a, or interracial, interracial uh, relationships were taboo. And there, it was a big thing about that movie. It, it drawed a lot of attention, controversial attention, uh, because he had an interracial relationship with uh, Joan Fontaine. There was an also, here's another one that I, I enjoyed so much. And this was called Odds Against Tomorrow. If you ever get a chance to see that movie, I think you'll like it. it, it it's, it's, a, it's a great movie back in 1959. And he worked with Robert Ryan. I'm not going to give you the whole details of all of the movie. But um, he was the, um, he, they, they were supposed to set up this thing or something. Or some kind of, I got to refresh my memory with the movie. I got to go back and watch it. I do have that movie in my archives. but I got to go and remember the theme, but I do know 
um, there was a part when he had to deal with uh, 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 race relations, uh, prejudice, prejudice and bigotry uh, in that movie. That was called Odds Against Tomorrow, 1959, starring Robert Ryan and, of course, Harry Belafonte. Another one called uh, The World, The Flesh, and The Devil. This one with Ingrid Stevens, that goes back to 1959 for that one. Another, this one is black and white. So was the one that says uh, Odds Against Tomorrow. That was also black and white, but that was a great movie. Now, for those of you who are younger, you remember Harry Belafonte back in 1972 when he did Buck and the Preacher, along with Sidney Poitier and Ruby D. That was back in 1972. That was colorized. And another one, Uptown Saturday Night for 1974, with, uh, again, Sidney Poitier and Bill Cosby. Those are great movies, great movies. So uh, we, I'm very sorry to hear. And he was noted for that, that song that he did back in the 50s called Deo, the ba Banana Boat Song. That's what he was famous for, for that, uh, that, that movie, uh, for that song. Deo, and you notice if you go to some of the ballparks, right, uh, particularly Yankee Stadium, uh, you could hear them as part of the cheer. They, oh, they, they'll use that track. And I'm pretty sure, of course, he's getting residuals from that. And now his family gets res residuals too. So there you go. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being along with us. The name of the show is called Talk Back Live. And now let's go over to Charlotte, North Carolina, link up with Brian Cap. He's here right now uh, with the latest developments in today's world of sports. Brian, welcome back. We missed you last week. How did it go for you? Oh, it was a beautiful time being up in the mountains. Uh, a lot of a lot of the brotherhood of the men that um I'm affiliated and, and associated with. It was great. We, you know, we got some things off our chest. Um, it was emotional. It was nice, and um, it was refreshing. Put it like that. Totally revived and everything. You know, but um, you had to come back home, and you know. Uh, you know, after a couple of days, you know, you want to come back back home, you know, being up in the mountains and everything. But it was nice. But yeah, um, that Buck and the Preacher. Yeah, it was. That was one. You know, they don't show that too often. But that was Sidney Poitier and, and Harry Belafonte were very close friends. Yeah. And I think they died a year apart or two years apart because we just lost Sidney Poitier a couple of years ago or less than less than that, I think. Yeah. And, um, you know. A lot of people don't know Harry Belafonte was a, he was an activist. He was an activist. Yes. I, I, I failed to mention that. Yeah. He, he was good friends of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as well. Yes, he was. And that's, he was that's bringing that out. Yeah. Did you see the link that I sent you? Um, about I, the... you know, I was going to mention, I did. I, I enjoyed it. I had no idea mm -hmm. that existed. Yeah. And well, that's, that's what... That's well, what, that's what goes. That's what goes on behind the scenes of you know exactly of, of these takes and everything. You know? Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know what I did with that? I found it also on um, on on YouTube. So mm -hmm. I, I downloaded uh, uh, from YouTube. Now I have a copy of it, and I put Great. it on, on a drive. What I did is I took the movie. I I kind of used the fade in, and then at the end of it, it faded out to make it look good. But um, that, you know, that's when they re recorded uh, We Are the World. Uh, we Are the World. Yes, We Are the World. And I'd like to see Ray Charles and uh, Stevie yeah. Wonder laughing and joking. And They were having a lot of fun. Uh, uh, they, they did that. I think that was the last thing they did after they, they were getting ready to wrap up, to go home. Yes. They did that yeah. like up until two o'clock in the morning. And I said, uh, and so I'm putting two to two together and saying that the uh, they're getting ready to go home and they use that song. They like come and me want to go home. And <laughs> yeah. I, that was fabulous. What, is, what I, I'd never seen it before. I yeah. Never, uh, somebody sent it to, to me. I liked it. I played it over and over. Yeah. And I said, let me, let me just send it to you and everything. I'm pretty yeah, sure I, you could enjoy that. You know, I had to watch it a couple of times. It was so much fun to watch. One person in there didn't look like they were having fun with it though. Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan. Yeah. You, you take a look. Go back when you go back and watch it again. Yeah. He didn't look like he had fun with it. Everybody, well, I mean, fun. well you know, if it's two, three o'clock in the morning, you want to yeah. go home too. You know, <laughs> ready to go home. Yeah, that's yeah. what I. Did. <laughs> <laughs> you had Michael Jackson on there. You had, uh, you had so many, so many celebrities on there. Quincy Jones. 
yeah of course uh, or you know orchestrated that and did a wonderful job yeah. yeah yeah but i think they did that off the cuff didn't they i don't think quincy jones actually orchestrated that i don't think he orchestrated that but it, you know he was in charge of the of the song of oh, um, we yeah. are the world yeah and they just was just fooling around and jiving around and yeah and just having fun you know see you know, those, those behind the scenes are more entertaining than the actual oh product. yeah Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, uh, you've seen uh, what's his name? What's the singer? Um, the guy from Jersey. Uh, oh, what Bruce, is his? Bruce Springs. Bruce, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was there. <laughs> he was in there too. Yeah. A lot of them. Yeah, you know. it, it was fun. I'm gonna watch it again. I put it. On, I put it on. I like I said. I download it and I put it on a drive. So all I have to do is plug it into my TV and watch it. That's Remember it. Yeah, it. it's great. <laughs> But here, and good evening to you all out there, whoever, where you are, um, what, uh, all around the globe that's tuning in. It is uh, uh, 59 degrees out here in Charlotte, North Carolina. It was raining all day today. I mean, rain, 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 rain. It's still raining, and it's going to rain all the way up until tomorrow morning around 9 o'clock. That's when it's supposed, supposed to stop. So um, that's where we are right now here in Charlotte. North Carolina, known as the Queen City, and it's um, still pouring down. And I was able to, um, to to cook something on on the grill. I didn't use the smoker. The smoke is for um, another time, but I was able to get on the grill just to have a light dinner and um, you know just enjoy myself. But um, hope everywhere else everybody's safe and enjoying themselves in sports tonight starts as we speak. The NFL draft, yes. The National Football uh, begins their draft t tonight, and it goes through the 29th, which is going to be on a Saturday. You can catch it on ESPN, the NFL Network, and ESPN Plus. So you could catch whatever channels that you could. Um, check for your teams um, and see who they're going to draft for this upcoming football season. Speaking of football, uh, six NFL players were suspended indefinitely uh, for betting on the NFL games in the 2022 season. Detroit Lions wide receiver Quintez Cephas and safety C.J. Moore and Washington Commanders defensive end Shaka Tony are sidelined for the entire 2023 season. Yes, uh, they may have a petition um, after they serve their time. Also afterwards, uh, wide receivers uh, Stanley Berryhill and Jamison Williams, each from the Detroit Lions, each will get a six-game su suspension for gambling. You cannot gamble uh, while you're playing. You know, they, they, these guys are professional athletes. It's something like similar to what Pete Rose did. So you got to be very careful. The NBA, remember the uh, former Boston Celtic coach, uh, Ibe Yuduke, who was uh, had a child by... Um, Nia Long, who was um, caught in that scandal a year ago with a female employee, has agreed to become the new head coach of the Houston Rockets. Um, so he's, um, he's, he's, he's out of the uh, hands of the Boston Celtics, and he's becoming, he's going, will become a new coach. See, you get a second chance in life. He was, a, he was an excellent coach for the Celtics, but he got caught. He got caught in a, in, in a scandal, and you know, there's a little con a little controversy with that because they won't release the woman's name. Takes two to tango. So, but I guess they want to use him as a scapegoat. So, Didn't they have an El Duque Duque in baseball too? Um, yeah, he used to play yeah. for the Yankees. Yeah, but he was Cuban. But but yeah. this is not this no. But th but these are this guy here. The coach is an African American. Oh, okay. Who has, who has an African name? El Duque is former uh, Yankee pitcher yeah. um, who's Cuban, who's, who, yeah. who's from Cuba, who pitched for the Yankees and helped win a World Series. Yes. Um, name sound alike, but different, totally di different. This day in sports, April 27, 1926, and uh, the New York Giants 9-8 win versus the Phillies. Mel Ott, 17 years of age, made his first appearance. 17 years old. Wow. I remember Ed Cranepool was about that age too when he made his 
um, baseball debut with the Mets. Uh, I think he was 16 or 17. Mm -hmm. 1947, Babe. I, huh? I don't think he was that young. I think I think he was about 18 or 19. Well, he was a teenager. I mean, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Maybe it was something like that. Um, 1947, Bay Roof Day was celebrated at Yankee Stadium and throughout the United States. Uh, 1953. Remember wrestler Fred Blassie? <laughs> yeah, well, he was the one. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He is known to uh, has the coin term of pencil neck geek. <laughs> okay, that was in the sports. I had to pick it. Yeah, 1961. <laughs> NFL officially recognized Hall of Famer. In Canton, Ohio, that's where they have all the Hall of Fame ceremonies at, and where that's where they or the plays are enshrined. 1983, Nolan Ryan becomes the strikeout king with 3,509, uh, passing Walter Johnson. Birthdays, 1896, Major League Baseball Hall of Famer Roger Hornsby was born in Winters, Texas. 1916, 1960, Major League Hall of Famer um, was born then, yes. In 1932, Chuck Knox, NFL coach, was born in Sedwickley, Pennsylvania. 1941, Leroy Jordan, former Dallas Cowboy NFL linebacker, was born in Excel, Alabama. 1952, George the Iceman Gervin, very smooth shooter, used to play in the ABA with the red, white, and blue ball. He was an NBA small forward, was born in Detroit, Michigan. And 1967, Jason Whitlock, sports journalist, was born in Indianapolis, Indiana. And ladies and gentlemen, that is sports on a rainy, chilly day here in the Queen City of Charlotte. You know, that pencil neck geek, I, I, I used to love wrestling even more back in those days. Uh, he, he used to, I mean, I love Fred Blassie, but in a way, he was a kind of a guy in a way that sometimes I liked him and sometimes I hated him. You know, yeah, and he was that he had that wicked laugh all the time. You know, he, he was just and uh, because back because back then that's when Vince McMahon was an announcer. I don't think he had any ownership, right? He was an announcer, uh, yeah, on the WWF. And um, so yeah, and then what, what about what about the other ones that they had there? Um, okay, they had they had Fred Blassie, they had Captain Lou Albano, yeah. And my favorite was the Grand Wizard. Grand Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> McMahon. <laughs> the Grand Wizard, boy. He was uh, he was something else. And yeah, it was the Worldwide Wrestling Federation. Yeah. 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 There were so many great runs. I mean, I still enjoy it now, but these guys, they were like really funny. Um, Vince McMahon managed to keep entertainment going all of those years. Um, you know, but obviously he's not, he's not around anymore. I think he got caught up in a scandal or something. So I think he had to relinquish his, his title to his, his, um, uh, his kids. Daughter. Yeah. I think it was daughters. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I, I saw a picture of him that's floating online right now. Now he has a mustache. <laughs> did, you, did you ever see, did you see that picture of him? I didn't see that. No, it's I didn't floating see on. That. You you you'll run into it. It's floating online every every once in a while. You know. I used to like the wrestlers back when I was growing up in the seventies and the eighties, like yeah. superstar Billy Graham and yeah. Dusty Rose, American Dream, and yeah. and the and the Funk Brothers and oh, yeah. Chief J. Stromberg, Bruno Sammartino. I can go on and on. You know. And, and just, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately, um, wrestlers die early. Uh, yeah. whatever reason. And some of the reasons are alleged reasons like uh, steroids, because I know mm -hmm. it's been allegedly that it's been floating around in the, in the, um, in the wrestling world for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, some, some people are, are, were taking them and then got off and then some, you know, it took them out of here, you know, but you know, mm -hmm. They, they they still keep it going, and I never miss a mass even now today. I even never, even though I liked it better back in the old days. But there it yeah. is. everything it was, changed. It was great. Oh, you know who else has passed away too? Uh, Dick Rote. Remember Dick Rote? Dick Rote. Dick Rote. No. Dick Rote was uh, he played for the Pittsburgh Pirates. He was, I think, he was a. Is he a pitcher? He was a pitcher for the Pittsburgh Pirates. 
And if I, if I, if I can remember, I think he was playing with, I think he played with the St. Louis Cardinals too. I think, I'm not sure, but he was back in the, he would play back in the sixties back when, when okay. I Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I probably wouldn't remember him back then if, if it was in the sixties. The only teams that I remember in the sixties was the Mets and, and the Giants, of course. Because <laughs> I remember when the Giants used to come into town, um, I would go to, you know, I, you know, we would go to Shea Stadium just to see them play. And, yeah. um, so it was, you know, that was, that's as far as I could go back and actually remembering players like that. I, I miss Shea Stadium and I miss the old Yankee Stadium. And I've never gone to, uh, I hate to say it, but I've never gone to the new Yankee Stadium and never been in City Field. Wow. Yeah. I've never been to the new Yankee Stadium. I've been to City Field. Uh, it's like it's a beautiful. Well, I've been to San Francisco, too, with their, with their stadium. But City Field is a nice. Um, they got these so many restaurants now inside the stadium. Yeah. But you better. It's, it costs your arm and a leg, though. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty yeah. sure the seats, are, the seats are probably is. Oh boy, yeah, it, it's just a long, it's just a long way because I remember box seats back when I was growing up were like eight bucks. Yeah, yeah, eight yeah. bucks. Oh well, yeah. what do you? Anyway, I'm glad you're back, and uh, yes. you'll be back tomorrow, right? Uh, ten o five. Ten o five. Sounds 10 good. Sounds yes. good. All right, so I guess we'll catch you then. All right, everybody, be safe, and if you're in the Charlotte area. In North North Carolina, you better have an umbrella. Stay dry. <laughs> Take care, Brian. Right. That's Brian Camp, ladies and gentlemen, with the latest developments in today's world of sports. He'll be back here tomorrow, as you already heard. He's usually doing the 2020 feature, 20 past the hour. But, you know, he's busy. And, uh, of course, uh, we like to accommodate uh, everyone. If they have to move their time forward or backwards. We do the best we can. We try to work with everybody. That's the kind of guy I am. I, I like to work with people. You know, I'm not the kind of guy to say, no, you, you do this, you do that. No, it's not the way to do it. That's not how you hold on to people. You know, you got to give people a chance. You know, I listen to ideas. I listen to everyone. I listen to ideas. Um, uh, whether or not I go for it later on, I, it's up to me to make the decision, but I will listen and, and I will work with you. That's how I do it. Anyway, in case you're just joining us, I hope you're listening to me. I like to listen to you, whatever you have to say. If you want to say anything, of course, all you have to do is just type and I'll see you right there on the big screen. And if there's anything in particular that you want to talk about as far as topics are concerned, uh, of course, again, I will listen. And uh, we'll entertain you. We'll entertain each other. Do that. But the name of the show is called Talk Back Live. And, of course, we're going to be here uh, until the top of the hour. And, um, of course, there's so many things uh, that we got to get going uh, right throughout the show. So we're going to, you know, move along as uh, fluently as possible. How about that? Okay, let's get started right now. Remember, on this day in history, it's about that time for us. So let's get started with it right now. On this day in history, back in 1941, German troops occupied Athens, Greece. On this day in history in 1942, Belgian Jews are forced to wear stars. Uh, on this day in history, in 1943, Soviet Union breaks contact, contact with the Polish government exile in London. Back in 1964, John Lennon's book of poetry and sketches in his own right is published in the United States. Back in 1979, George Harrison releases a single, Love Comes to Everyone. And we can't mention any kind of Beatle if we don't mention Paul McCartney. Back in 1981, uh, Paul McCartney's solo rock band Wings, they broke up that year. Uh, we don't have anything on Ringo Starr. Where are you, Ringo? Where are you? Okay, back in 1982, the trial of John Hinckley begins for the attempt assassination of the U.S. President Robert Ray, uh, Ronald Reagan. And back in 1998, Rock for the Rainforest Benefit concert held at Carnegie Hall in New York City. Performances were included by Sting, Elton John, James Taylor, Madonna, Billy Joel, Joe Cocker, Emmylou Harris, uh, Roberta Fleck and Winona Judd. And back in 2019, Pope Francis donates $500,000 for 
for migrants who got stranded in Mexico trying to reach the United States. In 2019, I'm sorry, it's 1902. We're gonna go, we're going back in time again, 1902. Actress Kitty Kelly. Uh, you may not remember her, but then she goes way back. She's one of those old actresses that goes back with that uh, comedy called Ladies of the Jury and then another one called Behind Office Doors. That's turn of classic movie material. Anyway, uh, she was born on this day in New York City and she died in 1968. In 1922, actor Jack Klugman, who played Oscar on, Odd, on The Odd Couple, he also played a doctor called Quincy and, made, and Goodbye Columbus. He was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on this day. He passed away 2012. And 1927, jazz drummer Connie Kay of the Modern Jazz Quartet was born on this day. He was born in uh, uh, Tuckahoe, New York, and uh, he died in 1994. In 1927, Coretta Scott King was born on this day in uh, Heiberger, Alabama. She passed away in 2006. Radio disc jockey Casey Kasem was born on this day in 1932. He was born in Detroit, Michigan. He uh, died June 15th, 2014, at the age of 82 from uh, uh, Lewy body dementia. In 1937, actress Sandy Dennis, who was known for the uh, movies that she played, uh, Any Wednesday, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, and The Outer Towners. She was born on this day in uh, Hastings, Nebraska and she passed away in 1992. In 1939, comedian Ju uh, Judy Kahn, who was known for her stint in Laughing, and of course she played also uh, Love on a Rooftop, and she was born in uh, Northampton, England, and she passed away 2015. In 1944, soul singer Cuba Gooding Sr., he was a member of the main ingredients. He did that song, Everybody Plays a Fool. And of course, he was born in New York City. And he passed, he born on this day in 1944. And he passed away 2017. In 1947, soul singer Ann Peebles was born. And she's still alive and well. She was born in St. Louis, Missouri. She turns 76 today. In 1948, vocalist and guitarist. Kate Pearson of that rock group B-52s, the B-52s with the hit Rock Lobster and Love Shack. She was born on this day in Weehawken, New Jersey. She's 75 years old today. In 1959, singer Sheena Easton with her big hit Nine to Five Morning Train and For Your Eyes Only. She was born in Glasgow, Scotland. She's 64 years old today. In 1969, U.S. politician Cory Booker celebrates his birthday today. Uh, he was born in Washington, D.C., and he's 54 years old today. In 1981, oh, there he is. He was hiding somewhere. Ringo Starr, Ringo Starr, okay. Uh, Ringo Starr marries actress Barbara Bach in London, England. And so we covered all the Beatles already. Okay, in 1985, uh, police violence victim Rodney King weds... Um, Danetta Lyles in 19, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, okay, moving on in 1996, actress Robin Wright, uh, Wed's actor pa uh, Sean Penn in Santa Monica, California, my favorite place in California. In 1996, soap opera and actor Lorenzo Lama, Wed's playboy model and actress Shauna San at uh, Rockland County, New York. In 1962, actress Natalie Wood divorces actor Robert Wagner after almost five years of marriage, and they remarried in 1972. In 2004, actress Halle Berry files for divorce from her second husband, R&B singer Eric, uh, Eric uh, Burnett, and uh, that was six months after a couple was separated, after they were separated. In 1965, newscaster Edward R. Murrow with the big uh, show called Person to Person, that was a long time ago, back in the 50s. He dies at the age of 57 years old. In 1999, trumpeter Al Hurt dies of liver cancer or liver failure at the age of 76. In 2000, the year 2000, disco singer, actress, Vicky, Vicky Sue Robinson, remember that big hit, Turn the Beat Around. 
she dies of cancer. She was only 45 years old. And finally, in 2009, Frankie Manning, a dance instructor, choreographer, and one of the founding fathers of Lindy Hop. And I met him, great guy. He dies at the age of 94 years old. When I was doing swing dancing back in those years, he said, never miss the Saturday night, never miss the Friday night or Saturday night. And uh, I had an occasion to meet Frankie uh, Manning back in those days. Anyway, that's this day in history. That's what we have. And if you know of anyone or anybody or anything that's happening on this day in history that I mentioned that you happen to know about, please feel free. Uh, get there, type it in. I will see you right there on the big screen. And of course, I will continue to uh, read everything that comes your way. But uh, those of you who care to indulge, uh, we thank you so much for being along. We would really like to always acknowledge you personally. And some people, you know, they're, they're shy about it. They don't want to, they'd rather sit back and enjoy the show and not involved in conversation, but that's okay too. As long as you're there, that's the most important thing. If you're just joining us, the name of the show is called Talk Back Live. And my name is Frank Allen. We're going to be with you till the top of the hour. We have about, what, uh, a little under 20 minutes left. And um, and for those of you who are watching us on uh, Facebook, please, whatever time is left right now, please take the opportunity to tag your friends and let them get involved. Give them a piece of the action too. let them in. They'll see your uh, information. They'll see that notification that you sent them. And when they click onto that, knowing it's from you, it'll bring them directly to us. And if they like what they see in here, maybe they'll become members just like you. And for, speaking of members, all of you who are watching us on YouTube, I always encourage you to please, please take the time and um, you know what to do. Subscribe to us, my YouTube channel. You're right there. Subscribe to us. You see the button, take your mouse and click onto it. And it's and that's all you have to do. No money involved. We don't ask for any money or handouts or anything like that. No doctor's notes, no anything. If you're over 18, you're in like Flint. And when you click on to subscribe, that gives you the opportunity to know when we come on live. Notification will pop up just in case you don't remember. Or if we uh, so much as uh, upload a video, you'll get a chance to see it. All notifications will come up there. And for, again, for those of you who are watching us on Instagram, well, you guys know what to do. Just keep the word percolating. Tell your friends and your family about us and get them on, in on the action and just keep following us. That's all you have to do. Now, for those of you, I ask you guys, you know, if you like to talk and if you don't like to talk, fine. But here's one thing you can do. If you want to get in contact with me, there's a way to do that. All you have to do is uh, contact me by email or telephone. Now, let me give you the email address first. Email address is frankallenprod at aol.com. That's frankallenprod at aol.com. All right. Don't forget to spell Allen, A-L-L-A-N. That's frankallenprod at aol.com. Prod is P-R-O-D. That's short for productions. Frankallenprod at aol.com. I have a telephone number, too. It's 641-7150. Uh, uh, extension 467134. That's 641-715-3900, extension 467-134. You can call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, whenever you feel like it, at any time. You can leave a message and maybe it's something that you want to relay to us, even if it's just to say hi. It's, it's fine. We accept all of that. Uh, but if there's something that uh, you have an idea about the show, you want to know more about the show, on why we're here or the history about the show, how we got started or whatever it is, uh, we'll be glad to give you that information. And uh, if you have some kind of idea about the show or there's something that you would like to see on the show or someone that you would like to see on the show, we're gonna do our best, we help you out. And I listen, as I said, I listen to everyone. So please, you know, do that. Give us an email or a telephone call. Let me give you that email address once again. The email address is Frank Allen Prod at AOL.com. That's Frank Allen Prod at AOL.com. Or once again, you can call us at 641 715 3900, extension 467134. That's 641 715 3900, extension 467134. 
Okay, you know, <laughs> I'm pretty sure by now, there's, there's no way that you could not know this, all right? And I'm going to lump all of this in one uh, particular subject, because even though the two may not be related to each other or different situations, but nevertheless, we heard about Tucker Carlson, right, from Fox News. He was, uh, according to what I heard, uh, it was a mutual agreement between Fox and Tucker Carlson that they part their ways, all right? Who knows? Who knows? Um, but um, just shortly before that, as you already know, they had a... Um, On the, they had a lawsuit going on, all right? And so now they have to cough up $787 million and a half dollars. Did I say that right? $187 and a half million dollars. And um, of course, you know, with, with the situation with Fox News and the lies and the uh, personalities who have uh, got involved into these uh, theory, uh, conspiracy theories and shooting false information to the public. And it's a whole big mess. But anyway, uh, on Fox, Tucker Carlson is gone. On CNN, Don Lemon is gone. Did you know that? Of course you knew that, right? And I, as I said, I'm going to link these two together. Maybe we can talk about it. If you want to talk about it too, of course, I'll be able to listen to you. Don Lemon uh, announced that day when it happened which was Monday, uh, that he was terminated by CNN and was stunned. He was stunned. I'm going to get back to that, why he was stunned, or if he was stunned. I'm going to get back to that in, in just a few minutes. Um, but the Tucker, the Tucker Carlson situation, now, let's talk about that. Let me talk quickly about that. Now that he's no longer there, now they're going, they're going to have to hire someone in his place. But before they do that, what they're doing right now is they're using different um, uh, Fox News hosts to fill in that position until they find someone that's going to fill it permanently. And uh, a lot of people are up in arms about it. Now, Fox viewers, uh, Fox viewers, uh, the, the rabid Fox viewers, a lot of them are leaving. I've seen things online where they say, well, you know, Tucker is not there. Let's boycott Fox now. Let's not watch Fox News at eight o'clock. Now he comes on eight o'clock Eastern here in New York City. All right, from eight to, I believe eight to nine. So we're not gonna, we're gonna boycott him. And then we're gonna watch uh, Newsmax because uh, 345 slash 666 is gonna be there. Whatever. So they 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 what they're doing right now. They're waiting to see what happens. He's gone, and I'm pretty sure, by the way, he's going to come up with some idea, or who knows what he's going to do. Maybe he'll go with another network. I can't see. If you want to know my opinion, I can't see him working in New York at another network uh, that won't um, do the kind of programming that Fox have been doing. And uh, so everyone is keeping their eyes open because they want to see what he's going to do. Uh, he's not going to starve, that's for sure. He's too wealthy for that. He was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. So until that time comes, he is going to, we're going to see how he's going to go. Maybe he'll start his own network. Maybe he'll, he'll start a, 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 a podcast, which a lot of them do, you know. Uh, but if he's going to take that same avenue that he's been doing uh, doing Fox, I can't see that happening in New York. Maybe he has to go to another place where they actually do that, if they do that, and, and deal with that. Now, a lot of people don't know that Tucker Carlson was also working at CNN. Did you know that? He, he, he was employed at CNN and also MSNBC and got fired from both of those places. Um, Will he make his return back to that? Uh, not likely, not likely. But um, it, it's 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 fascinating to see how this is going to work out. How this is going to work out when they hire another person? What are they going to do? Are they looking to hire someone 
at that same caliber? I don't think so, because I'm this, uh, I understand that he was the breadwinner for Fox News. And I, so, I also understand that he was the untouchable guy, you know. Uh, and so waiting, waiting to see around how I'm just hoping that Fox News learn from this. Look at it for what it is. You know, maybe if they clean up their act. Now I understand too. Now this is unofficial. This is unofficial, and um, it's not confirmed. It's unconfirmed. As I said again, it's unconfirmed. I haven't heard any more about it. But the news I got unconfirmed that um, Maria Bartiroma, Maria Bartiroma, and Janine Pirro are next on the chopping block. Unconfirmed, folks, unconfirmed. And if that happens, and I can see why that happens, but there'll be others. I don't think this whole thing is over yet because now everyone is taking a look at, uh, unless of course, if they're gonna calm down, cool their heels, uh, but they're also looking at, um, they didn't say anything, but uh, you got Laura Ingram, you've got uh, Sean Hannity, uh, you've got the uh, other people, you know, but they're all, you know, they're all, I, I don't know, they they all may be. I'm not saying that they are, but you never know. They may be destined for the chopping block. So we're going to have to see what happens. Now, again, as I said, if anything to that nature happened, and you remember last week I was on the air and I told you, I said, and this was before the firing before we got the news of the firing of Tucker Carlson. Remember when I said, if at any time they decide to ditch everyone at Fox and turn over a new leaf and get something going legitimately, because these guys at Fox News, they were not journalists, they were not bona fide journalists. Now, maybe we ought to go back to journalism the way it was in the early days. Like remembering guys like Walter Cronkite and Robert Trout and uh, 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 Max Robinson and 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 uh, who else? Barbara Walters and Bernie Shaw. These were top notch anchors, top notch anchors. And back in those days, those guys did the news. They did the news. They delivered the news. That's all they did. Deliver the news. And where I come from, ladies and gentlemen, New York uh, TV, TV overall, and we might as well throw radio in the mix as well. TV and radio is supposed to be a public trust. When you heard Walter Cronkite and all of these announcers that I mentioned on the uh, just a couple of minutes ago, when you heard these guys on the air, you believed them because it was true. They, they delivered the news and that was it. No commentary, no soapbox. No, nothing. That's what they did. They had special people who did commentaries, but the way they did commentaries is that it was the opinion, their opinion, and not necessarily the people that they were working for, their personal opinion. And at the end of each commentary, they would say, that's our opinion, what's yours? And then you could write in, because they didn't have email back in those days, you could write in and express your opinion. But they would express an opinion, but they wouldn't make a big deal out of it. They wouldn't uh, 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 take sides, any political sides or anything like that. And I think that's what TV should get back to. They really should get back to that. You know, and the thing with Don Lemon, I, I am I, I, I got to I got to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, I saw that coming. I, and, and that's when when I heard Don Lemon made the announcement and when he said, I am stunned. Um, I don't know, maybe he was stunned that they didn't tell him face to face because he got the information from his agent. His agent told him, you were just fired from CNN. And so the management of CNN did not go to him directly and tell him about it. So maybe he was stunned about that. Other than that, I don't think he should have been stunned because uh, I saw it coming. And let me explain to you why I thought it was on its way. Remember when Don Lemon had the uh, the the prime time show? He was on uh, ten o'clock Eastern here in New York, and um, his show was called Don Lemon Tonight. His brand, his show was branded 
That was his show. His name was on it. It was branded. And one night he made the announcement saying that, uh, you know, uh, we just got this information and we are going to move over to mornings. And um, uh, the management approached me with the idea and said, uh, we're going to go to mornings. And um, and I'm thinking, I'm saying, okay, uh, he's leaving prime time mornings. Okay. And I'm thinking that is his own show until I found out later that he was going to be co-hosting with others. And so when I found that out, I said, okay, that's not too good. Because why would anyone leave a show that's that's their brand? Why would you leave that prime time, your brand, and then to move over to the mornings where you have to uh, a co-host with other people? So that's no longer your show now. It's nobody's show. It's three names on that show. And that's nobody's show. And so that's how I saw that coming. And I said it, and I must have said it on the show a couple of times. It's just a matter of time. They may do something. And so my guess, my only guess is that they decided that they're going to take the show, take Don Lemon off primetime, put him on mornings. And my guess is that it wasn't mutual. That's my guess. That's only my guess. It wasn't mutual because I've seen these stories and I've witnessed this so many times before. And maybe that's what Don Lemon said, but I, my guess is that they say, look, you're going mornings, tough. That's the way it is. We're, we're, we're doing something else at night and you're going to go mornings. And when they put him on mornings, I said, OK, this is not good. This is not good. And so this was kind of, in my opinion, kind of a way to like wean him out. To wean him out. Take them off prime time, put them on mornings and wean them out. And then they, they couldn't do anything with them. He has union representation, but then they found a good excuse to get rid of him the day that he made that remark about Nikki Haley and her age. All right, I don't know if it was a, a good excuse to do that. I mean, it was a bad choice of, of language but I don't know if it was a good excuse to get rid of him. But so they decided that they were going to give him a, take some classes um, to brush up on his ethics on the air. And he did that. And um, and I just turned on and I just found out. And when I found out, I said, OK, I wasn't surprised at all. I wasn't surprised at all. And I'm sorry, but listen, believe me when I tell you, Don Lemon is going to jump and he's going to land on his feet. and so. Carlton Tucker, they'll land on their feet, you know. So I am hoping, I am hoping that the people at Fox learn from this. So there's nothing to be said yet, but just to keep your eyes open and see how Fox is going to do this. They may go down the tubes, who knows? They are, their people are leaving. Their people are leaving, you know. We're going to probably talk more about this tomorrow on the, on the coffee hour and uh, talk about it then. But ladies and gentlemen, right now I wanna talk about uh, those movies uh, that you love so much, Turner Classic Movies. Now, you know that I have my picks of the week each week. And of course, uh, if you like to catch up on some movies this week, I have a few that I wanna lay on you. Here's one that I think all of you like, you're a music lover, back in 1970. It was released then, but actually it took place in 1969. Woodstock. On Turner Classic Movies, that's on Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern. A lot of great movies, a lot of great uh, music. And I think you're going to look forward to that. Back in 1972, Superfly with Ron O'Neill and Sheila Fraser. That's on Turner Classic Movies. That's coming on Saturday at uh, 12 a.m. Friday night, Saturday morning, 12 a.m. Eastern. So if you're up late, you could watch it then. But if you happen to say, okay, you know what? Uh, I can't stay up that late. DVR it. Here's another classic from 1973, Cleopatra, Cleopatra Jones with Tamara Dodson, Bernie Casey, and Shelley Winters. That's on Turner Classic Movies on Saturday at 3.30 a.m. as well. DVR it if you can't be up. And last but not least, here's another one that I like so much and it comes out on a proper time. Malcolm X with Denzel Washington from 1992, Turner Classic Movies at 8 p.m. Eastern. And of course, that's a great movie. I'm going to be tuned into that, even though I have it in my heart. 
archives, but it's nothing like watching it on the show. So that's what I'm going to be doing, watching it there. You'll check out all these movies and also check out uh, Turner Classic Movies, the program guide and scroll through. There may be more. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up for me. I will be back tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern for the coffee hour. Brian Camp is going to be with me with the latest developments in today's world of sports on sports update. And uh, he'll have that for me as part of the 2020 feature, but he'll be here a little bit early. Uh, other than that, I'm going to be back here next Thursday, next Thursday at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern for more um, Talk Back Live. I hope that you will be with me. Brian is going to be with me uh, with more sports and the whole nine yards. So we look forward to seeing you then. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, have yourself a great morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. You've been watching Talk Back Live with your host, Frank Allen. The producer is Al Dale. Technical assistant, Dave Taylor. Research by Sandy Pierce. And I'm your announcer, Donna Stenke. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Talk Back Live.